Some people collect fridge magnets, other people collect matchboxes or stamps, but Ushner Grover collects lawsuits. He's getting sued by one of his co-founders, again. This is coming to us from Live Mint, and they wrote that Bharat Bay's second co-founder, Shashvat Nakrani, is set to sue Ushner over unpaid shares. So basically what's happening here is that in 2018, Bharat Bay's cap table looked something like this. 50% for Shashvat and 50% for Bhavi Koladia, the other original co-founder of the company. But then Ushner joined, and so the cap table changed. Bhavik had 42.5%, Shashvat had 25.5%, and Ushner had 31.9%. But Here's the thing. According to Bavik and Shashvat, Ushner never actually paid them for these shares. So earlier in 2023, Bavik had actually filed a lawsuit against Ushner for the exact same thing, unpaid shares. And now Shashvat is following suit. But here's the crazy thing. Ushner actually acquired these shares for 10 rupees per share. Now though, each of these shares is worth 4 lakh rupees each. And Ushner apparently got 24,470 of these back in 2018. And I'm not sure how many of them he has left after multiple funding rounds, but if we do the math here, 24,470 shares would be worth 978 crore rupees today. Now, these are just two lawsuits, a pretty small collection, but actually in the last five months, Ushner has had three other lawsuits filed against him, bringing the total in the last five months to five. And Ushner actually did respond to this on Twitter saying, I'm a bit confused as a Bharat Pay shareholder. Am I invested in a fintech or a law firm? Also, a new case against Ushner Grover every week is a feature or a product release. In the meantime, though, he's actually pretty hard at work building his fantasy sports app, CrickPay. And in spite of the fact that the app was delayed a little bit due to the passing of Ushner's father, the app managed to get 10 lakh downloads in less than 10 days. Also, gamers have brought in 7.5 crore rupees as overall winnings from the app. And remember that 80% of the money that gamers are spending goes back into their pockets, according to CrickPay. And so that would mean that in less than 10 days, CrickPay gamers have spent 9.4 crore rupees on the app, which would mean that CrickPay's revenue from that would be about 94 lakh rupees. So if we do a little bit of guesstimation here, we can break this down into about 10 lakh rupees that CrickPay is bringing in per day. And there's actually seven weeks left of IPL. And so this would mean that CrickPay could bring in upwards of five crore rupees in revenue over the course of IPL. That's about $600,000. And it's a little bit too early to extrapolate these rough calculations and guess whether CrickPay has a shot at actually becoming a unicorn as they've planned. The registered company's name is Third Unicorn, but let's take a look at some other unicorns and see how they're doing. So Ntracker published this amazing report on the state of India's unicorns, and we'll put a link to that in the description down below. It's a great report, but just at a glance, we can see that out of 100 unicorns that filed their financials for FY22, 69 are loss-making and 31 are profitable, which is a step up because in FY21, only 18 were profitable. Now let's take a look at the top loss-making unicorns of FY22, and it's pretty clear who the winner is here, or maybe the loser, Flipkart, they lost 7,800 crore rupees, that's $950 million of basically Walmart's money that they're just bleeding into the Indian market, so cue the tiny violin here. But then on the other side, we have the most profitable unicorns, and Zoho was the leader here, they brought in 2,749 crore rupees in profit, that's $334 million, and then Zero was coming in at a close second at 2,094 crore rupees. Some other quick insights are that Bengaluru is leading the charge right now when it comes to unicorns with 41, followed by NCR at 36, and also the biggest sectors for unicorns are e-commerce and fintech. And I love this last paragraph of the report here, this new term called profit corn, basically letting the priority be on revenue and profitability together as key metrics rather than just looking at revenues and accepting or sometimes even in encouraging losses. So being profitable is finally cool again. All right, next up, I've got a couple of quick news items to share with you guys. First of all, Zest Money is going to be laying off about 20% of their workforce. That's about 100 people. They actually were planning to be acquired by PhonePay. They thought the deal would go through, but then PhonePay actually pulled the plug on the deal saying that Zest Money just didn't meet their due diligence standards. And then also in other layoff news, it looks like Practo has fired 41 people who the company indicated were low performers. And then also Euler Motors fired 10% of their workforce, which could be anywhere between 50 and 200 people. Nobody's quite sure how many people work there. And so that brings the total number of people that startups have laid off in India to about 25,000 since the beginning of 2022. 
And then in other news, YC's winter 2023 batch has 11 Indian startups. And I wanted to highlight two that stood out to me. So Kuhu is an audience monetization platform where creators can set up subscriptions, events, and courses. And they've got some pretty big investors backing them too. And then you've also got Ship, a platform where truck owners can bypass brokers and instantly discover loads that they can carry. Now, if you're interested in learning more about these 11 startups, I'll put a link to them in the description down below. But moving on, there was just something cool that I found, the launch of a new cold brew coffee liqueur called Coiffine. So coffee liqueur is a space that's been dominated by Kahlua globally. And while liqueur only makes up about 1% of India's consumption of alcohol, right down there with cider, which I think is such a shame. And I don't know if anyone else remembers this short-lived but amazing drink, but that 1% is still actually quite a lot. I mean, India's entire alcohol industry is worth about 50 to $60 billion. So even a fraction of that pie is pretty huge. All right, next up, let's move on to a bit of funding news here. It's been a week of many sub $10 million deals. The total comes in at around $168 million, but $100 million of that was, of course, phone pay. And I don't even know if we can call them a startup anymore. I wasn't sure whether or not to put them on this list. But then we also have Mayhem Studios, which is under MPL, raising $20 million. Again, not sure if they're a startup or not. They're under MPL. But let's take a look at companies outside of the big three cities, NCR, Mumbai, and Bengaluru, because RAPT is working on an electric two-wheeler, specifically an electric motorcycle out of Chennai. And so they raised $398,000. And then D2C skincare brand RAS Luxury Oil based out of Raipur raised $1.5 million to open up some exclusive offline locations and expand globally. And then there's also Barcelona Club, a men's fashion startup based out of Ahmedabad, and they raised 5 crore rupees in debt funding. Another interesting funding deal is Wubba Lubba Dub Dub, WLDD for short. They raised $1.25 million. These guys are based out of Bengaluru. And yes, it's based off of Rick from Rick and Morty's catchphrase. This is what he says. Wubba Lubba Dub Dub! And actually, this is a really apt name because they're a meme marketing company with huge clients like Disney Plus Hotstar, Baiju's, Amazon Prime Video, Spotify, Dream 11, and many, many more. And so... This kind of silly, but also very genius name, Wubba Lubba Dub Dub, actually filters out a lot of clients that they would probably not want to attract, companies that just don't get what they're all about. And they're able to focus on the high value clients that do understand what they're doing and want to target that Gen Z and younger millennial audience. And so if you want to take a closer look at any of the funding deals that I've shared with you today or any of the ones that you see on screen, feel free to check out the link in the description down below. This is where we're gonna be putting our Notion page. We're gonna keep all of this up to date so that you guys can see all of the funding deals that are happening across India. And you can also look at last week's deals too. Basically throughout the financial year, you'll be able to track what funding deals are happening in India. And we're gonna be writing it all down on this Notion page. So definitely check it out. And yeah, that's all I've got for you guys this week. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.